Okay, thank you everybody for being here. Uh, I'm very happy and pleased uh, to give a talk in the conference. I would like first to thank the organizer of the conference for the kind invitation and uh, the opportunity to present uh, a talk in RDC. I think this is a very nice opportunity to gather uh, ROS developers worldwide and uh, to get more in touch with uh, people actively working in ROS. So today I'm going to provide uh, a presentation about how to connect robots to the internet. This is basically what I'm going to show you. And at the end of the presentation, you will be able to control your own robot through the internet. You'll see it's very easy. Of course, there is a long, uh, very complex process behind, but I'm going to give, to give you uh, a way on how to access your own simulated robots through the internet and you can control them through a web browser. And my talk today will be about Rustlink, which is a protocol that we have developed to connect Rust-enabled robots to the Internet of Things and also to the cloud. So first of all, let me give a brief overview about myself. So I'm going to start uh, maybe 10 minutes to 15 minutes uh, with the presentation because I would like to give you the high-level concepts about the Rustlink protocol. And then I'm going to show you the details of the implementations. And finally, I'm going to provide you uh, a demonstration on how to control robots to the internet and monitor them. Okay, so about me, I am Professor Anis Kuba, Professor in Computer Science, working in Prince of Sultan University in Saudi Arabia. And I also act as a director of the R&D department of Gatech Robotics in China, and also senior researcher with Fisto Research Center in Portugal. Uh, I'm also reading the Robotics and Internet of Things lab in Prince of Sultan University. And uh, you can understand from uh, the name of my lab that we are working both in the frontier of the Internet of Things and also in robotics and uh, typically in uh, the area of cloud robotics. So the cloud robotics deals with the integration of robots into the cloud and into the Internet. And there has been a lot of initiatives uh, in the last few years uh, for this kind of integration with uh, very important results. And we have contributed in some of the ways in this direction. So Roslink is one of our piece of work that we have developed in this context uh, of cloud robotics. Also, I'm an ACM distinguished speaker. You can have more information from the website uh, here of my robotics lab and then slash Akuba, this is my personal page. So about a reference, uh, I'm also an editor of uh, four books on robot operating system with Springer. And the current talk, uh, we have a book chapter in the second volume of a robot operating system book. Uh, which was uh, co-authored with my colleagues, Maram Lajlan and Basat Khorashi. And uh, you can have more information and you can read more about the details of the Roslink protocol. So the Roslink protocol is something that you can use also for controlling your own robots. It's basically a methodology more than uh, like uh, a very concrete protocol because you can actually shape it in the way that you want in order to control your own robots. I'm going to explain this just in a few slides later. Uh, just to tell you that uh, we are now editing the volume four of the Ross book and the deadline is July 15, so in one week. Uh, if you have something ready and you would like to contribute to the volume number four, so this is a good opportunity. And I'm glad to say that the Ross book is uh, on the top 25% of the most downloaded books on Springer uh, in the two last years. Okay, so what's the problem? Uh, I'm going to start with what we call the Newton Apple. You know that. Uh, there is a myth that says that uh, when an apple just fall on the head of Newton, so he started to think about the gravity principle. And uh, actually, we have been working on a project a few years ago on developing a service robot, which is based on TurtleBot, a very simple service robot. And at that time, I, I, I was facing difficulties in order to deploy the robot in a large area. So you already know that when we want to control a robot over the internet, you should connect to your robot through a local area network. And uh, basically, we use a wireless Wi-Fi router, and we don't have a very big range. So that's what you can see here in green area is kind of what kind of range we can have in uh, a large environment like this one. This is the, the first floor of our uh, College of Computer Science here. And things will become even more difficult if you have even a larger environment like this. Okay, imagine that you have a large environment and you have a robot here, but your only Wi-Fi connection is uh, here. Uh, of course, there are some ways like to do uh, Wi-Fi extenders, but you know, this is not very flexible and it's not very reliable. 
So at that time, I have been thinking a lot, how can we control the robots through the internet, just to get rid of any kind of communication range limitation. And uh, we got a lot of, uh, actually, we have been browsing the literature review, and there are a lot of very nice works. I'm going to present a few here. So basically, here the problem is the communication with the robot anywhere and anytime. Of course, we don't want only to, to, to control robots within like uh, one environment, but maybe you want to control it from anywhere in the world like you are going to do it today. So this is why, from why we got the idea on integrating the robots through the internet. Of course, we are not maybe the first one that tried to provide a contribution in this regard. We had uh, a lot of different works, and maybe one uh, of the pioneer works that I considered in the literature is uh, the Ross Bridge Initiative. And uh, in the, you can find a complete uh, Ross Bridge suite in uh, the Ross Wiki pages. And basically, the idea of Ross Bridge is to install a server as the robot here. Okay, and this server is going to communicate with Ross, get all the information, and then we'll communicate through a web interface using a web socket protocol. This is the idea. And of course, they have also developed ROS.js, which is an adaptation of JavaScript to ROS. And this uh, solution is very nice and has allowed to contribute to many different platforms like online robotic labs and so on. But still, we find out that there is one limitation, is that the server is located inside the robot. OK, so now uh, you still need to communicate this robot within a certain uh, local area network. Or maybe if you want to communicate with the robot through the network, you need to have uh, not, uh, network address translation devices, because not every robot would have a public IP address. Usually, the robots are behind a private network. So you cannot access them directly because they don't have uh, direct, uh, they don't have public IP addresses. So we couldn't actually go with the uh, bridge because of these limitations. We wanted something that we can control uh, independently from uh, the location of the robot. And we don't want to make like bother ourselves with net translations and uh, port forwarding solutions and so on. So. We first started actually before going to the Roslink protocol. Uh, we had the project working on the integration of drones into the internet. And the idea was actually uh, from two perspectives. One is to offload computation from drones because they have, they are battery uh, limited. So they are, uh, and instead of making all the processing on the drones, so we transfer them to the cloud and also to allow their control through the cloud. So what we did, we developed here what we call the drone map planner which is a cloud-based management system for, uh, for the monitoring and the control of drones. Initially, it was for the monitoring and the controlling of drones. And for this, we have used the MavLink protocol. The MavLink protocol is kind of standard that allows the communication between uh, unmanned aerial vehicles and also ground stations. So what we did here, we put some kind of software here, like a cloud server, and then is going to ensure the communication between the drones and then the drama planner. At that time, uh, giving the background of the two works that we did, we decided actually to extend this one and uh, be able not only to uh, control Mavlink drones, but also ROS, uh, ROS uh, drones, uh, ROS uh, robots, ROS enabled robots. And for this, we needed to develop a protocol that is similar to the Mavlink. So we get spired somehow from the Mavlink protocol, and then we developed the Roslink protocol I'm going to explain now. So to summarize, the problem is that whenever you have a robot, you need to connect to the ROS master. And every robot has its own ROS master, so you need to have a, a communication only with one robot. Imagine that you have multiple robots, you need to have, you have three ROS masters and you have to communicate with them. Maybe you can put the ROS master inside the centralized server, but this is not very scalable. It's not very scalable because you know, Ross, when you start to run so many, uh, so many topics, especially with the uh, video feed and uh, slam applications, is going to become very heavy. Imagine that you have multiple robots on one server, it's going to be very heavy. So the idea here, uh, so yeah, this is the heavy solution that is not scalable, is to put all the different uh, robots into one ROS master. So it's not going to be very 
scalable, especially if you have so many topics to manage. So our idea was actually to extend the drone map planner, and then we have developed a ROS, uh, software component that is called the Roslink Cloud of Proxy. And this one is going to interact with the different robots. So every robot is going to have its own ROS master. And then uh, we're going to have Roslink Bridge. It's a bit similar to Roslink Bridge, but uh, we don't use the same protocol. It's a completely different way of... Uh, so here we have three tier architecture. We have one for uh, the ROS uh, robot. And then the second layer is about the Roslink Bridge. And the third layer we have the Roslink server. So this server is going to be located in a public server. So it's going to have a public IP address. So any user will have access to this public IP address, uh, this public IP server, and every robot will have access to this public server. So all robots can communicate to the servers and all the users can communicate to the servers. And then uh, the cloud is going to manage which robot is going to be to monitor it by which user. So this is the idea. And this idea is actually, it leverages the use of cloud computing and the IoT. So this is a simplified architecture. So basically what we have, this is your robot, and this is ROS running here. ROS is going to interact with the drivers. And then you have ROS link bridge. I'm going to show you like how to implement this in Python code. Okay, it's going to interact with ROS. We'll read all the topics, okay, and we'll uh, publish to uh, all the commands. And then this one is going to communicate using UDB or TCP protocol, depending on how you want to do it with Roslink proxy, and the Roslink proxy is going to communicate with the user with Roslink client. So communication here is made using WebSocket, and communication here, for the moment, we have implemented using UDP, but it can be implemented with any other transport protocol, whatever you want to use TCP, or you want to use uh, WebSockets. Okay, so in order to ensure the communication here, we needed to have a message structure. So we have devised uh, a general message structure, uh, and every packet is going to have Roslink version, ROS version, the system ID, the message ID, the key, the sequence number, and the payload. You're going to see this in details in the implementation, and because of the limitation of time, so I need to go a little bit fast on this. But these are just some information that the packet is going to carry, and the payload here, it can be of two different types. Either is going to carry a state of the robot, for example, uh, the current location, or the current velocity, angular velocity, linear velocity, anything that you want to monitor. It can also carry uh, a command sent from the user. For example, you can send a twist message, or you can send, for example, a waypoint which you want the robot to go to. So uh, this is now a specification of the Roslink protocol. Uh, you can see this in more details into the book chapter. Uh, this is an example, for example, of a presence message, what we call the heartbeat message. So because we have a communication between the robot and the server, we want to make sure that the robot is alive. So we're going to have a heartbeat message. This is a periodic message that is going to be sent. For example, every one second or every two seconds, it's up to you to specify what is the frequency of transmission. In our implementation, we have used every second so that the server knows that the uh, that the robot is alive. For example, if the server does not receive a heartbeat, heartbeat message within five seconds or 10 seconds, depending on your preference, then we consider that the robot is disconnected, okay? So here, the heartbeat message is going to carry the type of the robot, the name of the robot, uh, the system status, the owner ID, and the mode of operation, the message ID, and different information of uh, of the robot. We have also another message of type robot status. For example, it tells you about what is the voltage battery, the current battery status, the battery remaining. These are information about the sensors available in the, in the, uh, in the robot. A global motion message, it tells you about the location of the robot, the linear velocity of the robot, and the angular velocity of the robot, and the orientation of the robot. So we pack every, all the information. So how we get this information? We're going to subscribe to the different topics. Okay, and then we got, we're going to extract this information from the topics that are available, and then we put them into this payload, and then we send this payload uh, to the server, and the server is going to forward that to the client. This is another example of range find message, uh, range finder message. If you want, for example, to measure the distance between the robot and uh, and obstacles, 
So you can assign the range of messages here. And this is a type of command. Now, as a remote user, for example, you want to move your robot and you're going to do that in a few minutes. You want to send a twist message. So the user can formulate a twist message containing the linear velocity and angular velocities, send them to the server. The server is going to forward the velocity to the ROS link bridge, and the ROS link bridge is going to publish those velocities into the twist topic. And this is a similar thing for the go to white. Uh, you can see I'm not going to talk about the network performance because as you know that the control is going to be done through the network. So the network conditions, like for example, uh, available bandwidth, packet losses will impact the performance. We have made some kind of analysis about uh, network performance and you can find the details into the book chapter and here you can find the summary. So we have made a closed control of the turtle theme. For example, this is when we, uh, this is the shape of a spiral. Uh, Okay, using ROS, and you can see that the spiral is a little bit bigger when it is through the network, of course, because there are some kind of network delays and jitters that are going to be added to, uh, to the application. This was just a brief presentation about the ROS link protocol, and now I'm going to move to the project. So you can open the project, or you can just follow me if you want, because later on you can do the demonstration yourself. Okay, and here in the Catkin workspace, we have the source folder. Okay, something unexpected here. I don't see my packages. Where should they be on the source? Uh, every, everything was in place just uh, 30 minutes ago. I don't know what's happening now. Okay, let me try to uh, go again to construct scene. Yeah, go, go to the well. You can go to the uh, icon of the wall that is there. There is an icon of the wall. Yeah, yeah. go there. And then just press on open the ROS project. It's going to open again your project. Okay. So it's, it has reloaded the whole project again for you. Yeah. Okay. You, can, you press yes. And then, well, yes or no, it doesn't matter. And then uh, go to tools again. Open your IDE. And let's see. So you don't have that information there. Well, it is. No. It's cost map prohibition no, layer. No. No, I, I'm seeing Robotnik. I don't know why I'm seeing Robotnik, uh, Robotnik IDE. It's not mine. Okay. okay. Wait, 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 wait a second. So if you don't have it, then... Let me, let me log in. Okay, I'm going to log in again. Maybe there is some kind of cache. Do you see the Roslink project? Let me make no. No, no, because you are getting again on to, into the same login. So, uh, have you used another, a different account, maybe? No, no, this is the same account okay. that I have. Okay, using. so let's but do one thing. Let me yeah. share with you the project that we have shared with all the participants. The people in oh. the chat is indicating that they are seeing your project. So, let me share with oh. you so you can just uh, get the link. Okay. okay. I'm going. To I'm going to copy this link with you. Just a second. Copying the link and sharing that with you on the chat of the speaker. Okay, so you can see here on the speaker chat. Here, I'm sharing this with you. So if you press there, then you should open now the okay. list. Oops. Okay, is there? Yes. Okay. And you I'm open, open, and then now. it should open. Yeah. Let's have a look. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. So that's perfect. Okay. Okay. So 
let me uh, explain you now a little bit the Rustlink package. So here you have, this is the Rustlink package here. And uh, we are going to make a demonstration on how to control a turtle bot and how to control a parrot drum, okay, both together. So let me start with the turtle bot here. Uh, this is the Python code uh, of uh, the Rustlink bridge of the turtle bot. So every robot, will have its own Rust link bridge. What does it do the Rust link bridge? It does two different things. First of all, it's going to subscribe to the topic of interest. For example, I would like to know what is the position of the robot. So which topic I'm going to consider, I'm going to subscribe to the odometry topic, right? So here you can see we have a list of subscribers. So here I subscribe to the odometry topic, and here I have odometry callback function. So what, what does it do, the odometry callback function? is going to read the odometry information, x, y, z coordinates, and then we, it's going to store them into a global variable that is called a Roslink state variable. So Roslink state variables, it's defined in another class, okay? And here we can have all the different state variables of our interest. Of course, here we put different ones. You can add your own if you want, okay? For example, here uh, I added uh, linear velocity, angular velocity, battery, and so on. So in the odometry topic, I'm going to update X, Y, Z global Roslink state variables and read them from the odometry topic. Same thing, I can read the quaternion, Okay, and then can extract the role, the pitch, and the U, okay, from the quaternion read from the odometry message and store them into this a global variable. I can do the same also. I can read the linear velocity and also the angular velocities. So this is how to process the odometry message. Once I do this, once I do this, okay, we're going to have uh, we can send this information using Roslink, okay? So uh, we have different Roslink messages that we create. You can see here we have heartbeat message, the one that I have uh, presented to you in the presentation. We have robot status message. We have global motion message, and we have GPS row information message and region find message. So all of these messages, we're going to send them you, with a certain frequency to the server, okay? So here you can see, here, create first link message thread. So we create different threads, one for the heartbeat, one for the robot status. Every type of message will have its own thread. So for example, I want to send the heartbeat message every one second, and I want to send the robot status every three seconds. I want to send the global motion information every, for example, five seconds. Now, it depends on how you want the frequency of your messages that will be sent from the Roslink bridge to the server. Okay, it's up to you to decide the values. Okay, these are values uh, that you can configure easily. Okay, and for example here, after a certain period, you're going to send a heartbeat message. So I'm going to formulate the, Rosli the, the message header and then the heartbeat message will consider of the message header and then the payload. The payload will contain the robot name, the state of the robot, the owner ID. It's the same messages structure that I have shown to you in the presentation. Let's look at the global motion message, for example. I want to send to the remote uh, browser the global message. For example, here, every message would have a message header. This is something common. And then we have uh, X coordinate, Y coordinate, and this is the orientation. So you can see from where I get this information, this information, I got them from the odometry package here. Okay, okay, host link variable X. It's the one that I have read from the odometry. So every time I have a new update from the topic, these values are going to be updated. So every time I'm going to send the updated value to the server. Okay, this is the global motion message and this is the GPS row information message, and so on. We don't have GPS here, so it's not going to be effective. And 
Now, this is an example of a command message. Now, in the application, we are going to send velocity. We are going to control the total bot. For example, moving forward, moving backward. We're going to send this information from a browser to the server. And when it comes to the server, it's going to send it to Roslink Bridge. So when Roslink Bridge will receive the command, it's going to check what is the command type. For example, if the command type is a twist message, okay, in this case, it's going to extract the linear velocity, the angular velo uh, the, the linear velocity x, y, z, and the angular velocity x, y, z. And finally, it's going to formulate a twist message. This is the twist message that is going to be formulated. And finally, it's going to publish the twist message. And in this case, the robot is going to move. So whenever you receive a, a, a twist message as a command, it's going to transform it to a twist message in Rust, and then it's going to publish this twist message, so the robot is going to move, okay? We can also have go to waypoint. In this case, we are going to send X and Y and Z coordinates of a posed stamp uh, a positive stamp message in ROS, okay? And of course, this can be generalized to any kind of command and to any kind of uh, state you want to monitor or to control on the robot, okay? So in the back end or the server, this is now what you can see now in uh, this uh, terminal is the server. This is now drone map plan planner cloud running. It's running on a public server. Okay, so we can access it now. And uh, it has different web services. Uh, okay, so you can see that there are some web services for the Mavlink protocol, some others for the Roslink protocol, and different type of controllers for the Mavlink, for the Roslink, for the cloud management, and so on. Okay, the, the demonstrations of today will be about the Roslink protocol uh, and the cloud management. Okay, so let me now create one turtle bot. I'm going to start the simulation of a turtle bot now. Okay. So one thing to check here, and uh, when you do the demonstration, so please try to follow me very well now, because when you do the demonstration, you're going to set some parameters that are specific for you. So you can see in the beginning here, we have an owner ID equal to minus one, and the key of the robot is no key. So if you don't change these values, uh, the program, the Roslink bridge, is not going to work because we wanted that every user is going to add his owner ID. I'm going to tell you how to get the owner ID and how to start the thing. So now, this is the robot, as you can see, and I want to control this robot from the internet. So I'm going to open my browser, and this is now a web interface that we have developed. Okay, and this web interface is going to interact with the cloud. So let me go back to the architecture. This is the web interface, what you see here in green. This is now my robot in the Construct Sim Simulator. And now I'm going to launch the Roslink bridge here. And what I have shown to you here, this terminal, is the Roslink proxy in the Drone Map Planner cloud here. Okay, so now, I'm going to log in to this interface with my email and later on you will be able to sign up, okay, in order to get an owner ID. So you can see my, my owner ID here is one, okay, because now this interface is going to show you only the robots with your, own, uh, with your own owner ID, okay, because now we have multiple users, multiple robots. We're not going to display all the robots of different users in one interface, but now I'm going to go here. I'm going to change this to one. And later on, you will put the owner ID after you do the registration and you log into the interface. You will find your automatic load, uh, owner ID. You put it here and then you can here put any key. So I'm going to put uh, TurtleBot to, uh, let me call it Anis key. So you can give it any name of your choice. Try to give some, some specific name because the robot will not accept to have two robots with the same key. Okay, can, just one, one yes. question, uh, Anis, just one question. Can we mm -hmm. stop a little bit here and make sure that everyone is able to get his own owner ID and put it there on the uh, parameter? It, because it's going to take time, but yeah. I can just maybe take uh, five more minutes 
to complete the demo and then I will let all the users take the time in order to create their own user IDs and try to make okay. things on their own. Okay. okay. Just okay, five great. minutes, you know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's but, go. Let's go. Yes. Yeah. So in order to avoid changing the code itself here, so what, what you can do, instead of modifying the Python code, which I do not recommend, what you can do, you can go here to launch and you have TurtleBot Rust link launch. Okay. And here you can change your owner ID. So you can see here the parameter owner ID and here you change the key. So you don't have to change it inside the Python code. I made this launch file just to make it easier. Okay. To, to change anything without touching the code. Okay. I'm going now to make it TB2. Okay. And it's key. Now we have everything in place. Uh, look at this interface now. I'm going to put it here because you will see the robot when I'm going to uh, start the Roslink bridge. You will see the robot now uh, coming up here in the cloud server. Okay. And look now in my web interface. I don't have any robot right now. Even if I press get robot, nothing is going to be shown. And now I'm going to open another terminal and I'm going, I'm going to launch the Roslink breach of the turtle bot. So I'm going to launch this Python code that you have developed as a ROS link bridge, which is going to be very simple. It's going to be ROS, ROS launch and then ROS link and then turtle bot ROS link. It's the same file that I just modified right now. Okay. I changed here the owner ID and I changed here the key of the robot and then I'm going to start it. So look what's going to happen here. So in principle, we should. Okay, for some reason, it's not showing up here. This is the effect uh, of a demo situation. Yeah, it, it's check. always happened. Okay. Oh, yeah, let's check that is happening. No, no, no uh, this one has freeze. So I'm going Frozen. to just what I'm going. Yeah, okay. just, just freeze. So in principle, it should be connected. Look. Okay. 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 Look, now the robot is connected. The only problem is that now this interface has just freeze, but now it's actually working because I'm able to see the robot. You can see now in the client interface, we are able to see the robot. But let me just uh, uh, try to restart the server. Uh, okay. Because I want to show everything quite well. So this is now the remote server. I'm going just to make a uh, soft reboot. It's going to take maybe one minute. Okay. And I'm going to show you again uh, the demo. Okay, look now, uh, we are out of the server. Okay, I'm going to uh, connect to it again. Uh, which is this one? Instance. Sorry for that, but uh, always there is uh, a demo effect that we cannot control. I did this uh, uh, like test, like maybe tens of times and it never happened only today. So, okay, now I'm just restarting the drawing map uh, server. Okay, now it's running. So I'm going to connect again. This is an opportunity to see how I will start the cloud server. Uh, it's going now to connect. Running. Restarting, it takes a little bit of time to enable the SSH server, so it's a bit normal.
Hello. Yes, we are here. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we are here. It, it's running. It's running, but it doesn't want to connect. To yeah. Something. So, uh, very, very good that you are uh, uh, getting the problem and solving it in in real time. You know. Yeah. No, no, it's simple to solve, but you know, let me restart it. I don't know. It's uh, kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah. That, that things it's, happen. I mean, it's not. Uh, yeah. It's not one hundred percent possible to yeah. so working one hundred percent of the times. I mean, of course. Let me but just make it. Thing. Let me yeah, make it we are almost the there. Almost there. Yes. I would like to to stress while you are doing this uh, to the listeners that there is uh, a couple of things here that uh, are different. So one thing is what you are executing in your computer that now is on the ROS development studio. That is where the robot is. And then there is another thing that is another part of the code of the ROS link that has to be executed on an external computer, on another yeah. computer. OK, that, that's what uh, Professor uh, Kuba is doing right now, so executing outside. So that's why you are seeing all those screens that you listeners do not, do not have access to, because it's the external computer. But you are going to, listeners, you are going to connect to those external computers in a few seconds by launching the ROS link node. OK, maybe in the meanwhile, uh, can you give this link to, uh, to the participants? So yeah, you can, you can post it on the Gitter chat. Are you on the Gitter chat? Or, uh, or if not, no problem to, so, to okay. share okay. with them? Uh, OK. Yes, I would like that the users sign, uh, sign up first So what they do. OK. They can go here. They can make sign up and uh, enter the information with their emails and everything. And then they register. And after that, they can log in with the email and the password they have provided. And then they okay. will get their owner ID. OK. So now what I'm doing is sharing the link with the participants. So on the Gitter chat. So for yes. all the attendants. Uh, go to the Gitter chat right now, and then I'm sharing the link of the ROS link demo. ROS link demo link. <laughs> ROS link demo link. Okay, so this is the page of the server of Professor Cuba where you have to go and log in, create an account, and login account. Okay, now, and okay. The connection yes, I, is zoomed to the cloud. But anyway, okay. you can, uh, as you like, I can wait for you or I can just resume the presentation. Like yeah, yeah, resume the presentation. Yeah, go ahead. OK, OK. So now this is the cloud. I'm going now to launch again the cloud server. OK. Uh, this is the cloud server, okay, which is this part. Okay, we wait until everything. Okay, look now, adding a new robot. Yes. This is the robot that we have started, you see. Now we get it here. Okay, so now you can see the robot that we have created is now added in the cloud. And then after being added to the cloud, I will be able to see it in my robot list. OK, I will be able to see it okay, now because I have launched two times. I don't know whether uh, it was me that launched this one or maybe someone else. I think maybe someone else have started the robot with the, the same owner ID. OK, but for me, this is now my robot that I have uh, started. Uh, well, okay. how can the listeners uh, set the parameters for their own Yes, I'm going, yes, now here they have to, uh, first of all, uh, sign up into the web application. And then uh, after they log in, they can find the owner ID. I'm, I'm going to show them, but let me just now uh, show them the control of the turtle bot. Uh, is, it, is, is everything clear so far? OK, yes. so you can see now this is the turtle bot robot. OK, and I'm also going to show you how we can move this robot now using the web interface. I'm going to bring this one here. OK, and now I'm going to connect to my robot, which is this one, because this is the key of the robot I have used. 
and then I will have a control interface. Okay, a control interface. And now I can send different commands to the robot. For example, I want the robot to move forward. And you will see now the robot start to move forward. I will stop the robot now. Okay. I can make the robot rotate in place. I can also increase the speed if I want. Okay. And look now, I'm rotating at 1.2. And you can see now, uh, in principle, 1.2 here, the angular velocity. There is some uh, different uh, changes. <clears throat> Okay, uh, the problem is that there is someone who have started another robot, so it's making some noise. Uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to log out, and I, I will show, I, I'm going to make another account, okay? Uh, and I will show you how we can execute. So basically, you have to go to sign up. Okay, I'm going to create another account. Please, all yes. the all the attendants follow the instructions from Professor yes. Kuban. You, no. can, you, can do, you can do like this. Okay, so now I'm going to use another email. Okay, and the password. And uh, so let me change the password. Okay, and then I register. Okay, and then it will tell you you have been registered as a new user. You can now log in. I will sign out from the other account. Okay, and then uh, log out first. I will log out, and then I'm, I'm going to log in with a new account. And you will see here, okay, now this, this is my owner ID. It seems that there are so many people who have registered, so my owner ID is 20 now. This is why now you can see the robot is moving, but I'm not able to see it here because I need to change the owner ID. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop this Roslink bridge first. Okay, I'm going to stop it. Uh, because it was done in the... Okay, and then I'm going to change here my owner ID. And let me make another key just to avoid having the same key twice. And now I'm going to start again Ross Launch. Ross Link. And then turtle bot again, bridge. I will go now to my uh, web interface. And you will see now, I'm able to see the robot. So now I can control the robot again from here. Okay, I can also move forward, I can move backward. Let me move backward here. Okay, so you can you can control the robot on your own. So now you can do the same strategy uh, on your computer, and then I will show you how we can control also a pirate drone in the same way. Okay, okay. we'll have to leave the pirate drone for another day because we are running out of time. No but it's okay, basically no is the same is the same procedure. Just launching yes. the other simulation. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. How can we check the, that the other people are, if other people are getting connected? So, if any of the attendants have achieved to manage to connect there, and have their own uh, talk about being controlled by your interface. Yes. Yes. I can see some robots here with different keys. Ah. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Leo Corp. Yeah. Yes, and this is the owner ID 12. So there are some people actually trying out. Okay, that's great. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. So then I think that we are going to leave here because that's the complete demo. Then, of course, the notebook contains more information about how to do the same with a pirate drone for other people, isn't it? Yes, of course. So they, they can check it later then. Yes, now there are four robots open. Okay. Great, great. So, the, yeah, the people is getting there. Yes. Great, very good. Okay, so let's uh, stop the, the presentation here. And thank you very much, Professor Kuba. Oh, thank welcome. you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.
Okay, very good. Uh, now let's go for the questions and answer. If we, uh, maybe, uh, can you uh, share your webcam or it's not possible for you? Yeah, it's, it's not problem, yes. Okay, yeah, because yeah. It, there were some problems there at the beginning. Okay, no problem. Then uh, let's connect to us then. Uh, and then uh, for the support team, is there any question for Professor Kuba? We have the EDS question. Okay, what? Well, yeah, okay, let me check. There is one question related to DDS. Uh, let me see. It's here, um, the questions, it says. So, So yeah, so, it, well, basically, yeah. Travis is asking, uh, is any thoughts on using DDS? I presume that he means in the TCP IP instead of using TCP IP by using DDS instead? Yeah, I, I heard about DDS, but honestly, I didn't uh, go very well in detail. I know that uh, ROS 2.0 is now based on uh, DDS and its kind of future. Uh, of course, now, in terms of uh, transport protocol, I mean, it's open. It depends on what you want to do. In our case, we have developed our own solution that is called the Drone Map Planner. Now, it supports uh, Rotinable Robot. It supports MavLink uh, drones. But we can think about any other kind of, uh, like, middleware in order to dispatch the messages between the robots and uh, the users. OK. OK, yeah, ROS2 is the one that is using DDS, maybe. Yeah, uh, yes. We'll know better there. Uh, so let's go for another question that we have is from Tick. He says, uh, thanks for the talk and the introduction. And can you tell us something about the security and safety features of the web server? Yeah, Oops. exactly. Yeah, this is a ahead. very important question indeed. And uh, just uh, in the beginning, when we have started working on cloud robotics, we were more uh, focusing on uh, functional uh, properties. I mean, how to make things work. And then later in time, we discovered that there, is a, there are a lot of non-functional properties that must be taken into account, and most importantly, is security. Yeah. This is now why we have most of our project focusing on two principal aspects, security and safety. Because okay. now, when you want to control robots and drones on the internet, you know, you have to take into account that the connection can break, that you can have, for example, uh, security attacks, that you can have any kind of problems that will perturbate the operation of your application. And in this case, we are now setting up some security protocol for the Mavlink protocol, for the Rosny protocol, for the Drama Planner server. And uh, we are aware about uh, this. Uh, it's, it's very important uh, resource topic nowadays. Yes. OK, thank you. Then uh, he's also. Uh... Uh, asking the same person, Tick is also asking, uh, is it possible to link multiple ROS masters via the web server which communicate with each other? So Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, yeah it's a little bit confusing. For, uh, yeah. So is it possible to link multiple ROS masters mm -hmm. via the web server which communicate to each other? I presume that he means to communicate the ROS masters of the different robots Using yeah. a web server, using your your web server, uh, so this is what that we, they don't reach they don't reach the the web application. Yes, yes this is what we did in the demo. Now I was controlling uh, my robot that has its own ROS master, and some other people were controlling their robots that have a different ROS master. So basically, ROS link bridge is actually a, a, an intermediate between ROS master and also the cloud server. So at the end, every robot would have its own ROS master, uh -huh. and then we we'll communicate with the cloud server using the ROS link bridge. And the ROS link, ROS link bridge at the end is kind of ROS node. It's just a ROS node that we uh -huh. develop. It's going to subscribe to messages and send them through ROS link messages to the server. That's it. OK. That's OK. Idea. Yeah, OK. So in any case, let me remind, remind to the participants of the conference that you can speak directly with the speakers, because they are also there on the chat, so you can get in contact with them along the conference. Sure. Yes. yes, yes. OK, so another question here is uh, from Jakub. He says, question for to Professor Anis Kuba. How long it would take to build an application similar to Drone Map Planner? <laughs> That's a good question, yes. It took actually a very, very long time. It was, uh, for me, maybe it took me like uh, maybe one year and a half. Wow. Uh, one year and a half to make everything from scratch. You know, I just started by developing very simple UDP socket and then 
I started to add more components, the restructuring things and so on. Now, actually, uh, I can show you the, the, uh, the source code of the Drama Planner. It contains several interfaces and several classes, all put them together in order to make the extension uh, easy and make the software modular. So because now, this is now uh, a kind of different software components where you can add others. For example, now we are interested to multi-robot allocations. Okay, so we can actually develop on top of Drama Planner a component that is going to make dynamic task allocation for multiple robots. This is one of the things that we are going to do. We can have a component for safety management, for security management. Uh, so Drama Planner is actually an extensible software. Uh, it took me a very long time to, uh, to make it. For the moment, we are thinking about putting this uh, commercially available through Gatech company. We are going with Gatech in order to commercialize this and we have some educational licenses and you have some kind of industry licenses yes for, yeah. for this one yes okay very good so well i think that we'll have to finish our questions and answers here sure. and just to thank you again professor kuba thank you very much for attending and for You're welcome. a yeah. nice presentation okay thank you very much thank you very much ricardo for thank you. Thank you. Bye.